As a child, I was taken by my father to watch the trains at Dorking Town Station, now renamed Dorking West. This was back in the 1950s when steam was still king. It was an unforgettable experience, and whilst today I enjoy visiting heritage railways, I am also fascinated by those lines that were less fortunate, but preserved as public footpaths, where you can still play choo-choos, chuff, 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 perhaps to the amusement of unfortunate onlookers. Dr. Richard Beachy is often accredited for the mass closure of non-profit making railway lines in Britain, but closures were already happening long before his report was published in 1963. He lived near East Grinstead in Sussex, where four lines used to radiate from the town to Lewis, Royal Tunbridge Wells and three bridges at Crawley, but today only one line via Oxted and East Croydon remains in public service as a busy commuter route into London for Southern and Thameslink trains. The line from East Grinstead to Lewis, as far as Sheffield Park, is now the Bluebell Heritage Railway, but it closed before the beaching report. There were two stations at East Grinstead, one above the other, but the upper station is now a car park. The former lines to Royal Tunbridge Wells and Three Bridges still exist as trails for walkers and cyclists, but the eastern arm, named Forest Way, finishes at Groombridge, where the Spa Valley Heritage Railway takes over as far as Tunbridge Wells West its imposing station now a restaurant. Back at East Grinstead, the former line leaving Upper Station became a relief road and was named Beeching Way. These former rail routes that are now footpaths allow walkers and cyclists to view architectural features at a leisurely pace and at close hand. It might be as simple as passing under or over a stone bridge or crossing a magnificent viaduct or walking through a tunnel. Walk the Monsell Trail in the Derbyshire Peak District and soon the iconic Headstone Viaduct is crossed, followed by the Crestbrook and Lytton Tunnels towards Millersdale Station on a route that only a few years ago took crack express trains from London St Pancras Station to Manchester Central. Opening up former railway lines for public recreation allows us to view scenic features that could only be experienced when travelling by train. Take the Tissington Trail out of Ashbourne and you have the unique privilege to walk through a tunnel previously used by train services to Buxton. On the Isle of Wight, the single track line from Newport to Freshwater at the end of its journey followed the River Yar. Passengers on the Hailing Billy had a grandstand view of Langstone Harbour and at Whitby, travellers entered Whitby across a magnificent viaduct with breathtaking vistas spanning not only the River Esk but also the main line into town and we've managed to catch a steam train while crossing the viaduct. All, of course, are now public footpaths. An indisputable benefit of a railway track that is now a footpath is that it is level and easy underfoot, essential, of course, for cyclists as well as walkers. Where the railway crossed inhospitable moorland or passed through a steep-sided river valley, casual walkers were able to access landscapes previously the preserve of the Harden Walker. This is particularly true of the Tissington Trail, which, after Tissington, crosses Allsop Moor at over 1,000 feet above sea level, and the views are magnificent. Whilst the architecture of closed railway lines consisting of bridges, 
viaducts and tunnels, not to mention cuttings and embankments, remain, some line-side features have also been kept. At Millersdale, some of the station buildings remain, and so have the platforms, whereas at Hadlow Road on the Wirral Way, the entire station building is preserved together with some railway artefacts. Some former station buildings are now private residences. The Beeching Report proposed the closure of around 5,000 route miles of track and 2,000 stations. In the event, 4,500 miles of railway were closed in Britain between 1963 and the mid-1970s, and that was after 3,000 miles had already been closed before the Beeching Report. The Talaslin Railway in Wales was the first to be saved from closure in 1951, followed by the Bluebell Railway in Sussex in 1960, which was the first to offer a public service. This saw the birth of Heritage Railways, and today there are over 500 miles of private standard and narrow gauge railways open to the public. Many other lines have succumbed to undergrowth or lost to improvements such as housing, but others have become recreational footpaths and cycleways with the help of Sustrans, a leading advocate for reopening old rail routes as traffic free. Many are shown on Ordnance Survey Explorer maps as recreational routes and traffic free cycle routes. They are fascinating legacies of the glory days of steam.